The Faraday Cage. A familiar name, but not many people know exactly what it is or how it works. And no, it's not the cage some bullies shoved Michael Faraday into, that's just called a locker. Well, I'll try to keep this simple. Faraday cages block electricity from going from the outside of the cage to the inside of the cage. They can be used to make cool pictures, like this one. So how does it work? First, you should understand that initially the cage has zero electric charge, also called neutral charge. Most objects in the world really, really want to be neutrally charged, and electrons will try to move around and make that happen. As the electrons, maybe in the form of a lightning bolt, get close to the Faraday cage, the cage's electrons get freaked out because they want the cage to stay neutrally charged. They try to go as far away as they can from the additional electrons. If the cage is grounded, then the electrons will get pushed to ground and dissipate. This happens continuously as the lightning bolt's electrons flow into the cage, realize there are too many electrons in the cage, and then try to get out of the cage by going to ground. Now, this might be a good time to mention that the cage's materials must be a material that allows electrons to flow. We call these conductive materials. Things like copper, gold, and most other metals. Non-conductive materials, like wood, don't allow electrons to move around, so the charge just builds up and then, well, bad things happen. So, a Faraday cage insulates the objects inside of it by offering a very easy path for electrons to get to ground. The electrons are happy, the girls in the cage are happy, everyone's happy. While lightning strikes are a nice thing to block, there's another very useful thing that Faraday cages are used for. Electromagnetic frequencies. Things like radio waves, ultraviolet rays, and most other things in the electromagnetic spectrum are blocked by Faraday cages. So, your phone won't work very well if it's in a Faraday cage, which is why your reception is so bad in an elevator. These kinds of waves get blocked because, well, let's just look at the name. Electromagnetic frequencies. Without going into too much detail about how EMF signals propagate by oscillating perpendicular electronic and magnetic fields, the Faraday cage will take the electrical component of the wave and swat it to the ground, just like the lightning bolt. Without the electrical portion of the wave, the magnetic portion cannot continue to travel and will dissipate, stopping the signal. Which is very useful for scientists that really need to perform high precision experiments, or, you know, anyone who really wants to reheat pizza in a microwave. That's why they have the mesh there, by the way. Now, I do feel obligated to mention, while the concepts in this video are true, the ability for a Faraday cage to work depends on a great many things, including, but not limited to, the material, hole size, cage thickness, and the amount of electric power you want to dissipate. It shouldn't surprise you that there is a lot more nuance involved in a Faraday cage design than putting a tinfoil hat on your head. So do a bit more research before attempting a stunt like this guy. Be sure to check out my video that summarizes Michael Faraday's life and his greatest works. And as always, if you want to see similar content, be sure to subscribe to the channel.